Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Monday Market Webinar with myself, Market Analyst. Uh, today's date is Monday the 6th of November. Uh, the time has gone just gone 12.15pm. Uh, and as always with our webinars, I will start off by showing you the risk warning up the slides uh, on, our, on the screen here. Have a quick read through that. Uh, there's a few more slides to go and then we will proceed on to the webinar itself. It's, it's, it's very straightforward, the risk warning. It essentially states anything that, that, that we cover in today's webinar should not be construed as explicit tr trading or and or investment advice. Uh, this is just merely me giving my own personal views and opinions and comments on what's going on in the markets. It shouldn't really be, be construed uh, or viewed as uh, explicit trading or, uh, and or investment advice. This is just kind of a, uh, a, kind of a free exchange of ideas and um, that will keep our compliance department very happy. But it, it is straightforward and it's the usual rundown set up uh, with, with the webinars that I hold every Monday at 12.15 um, London time. It is the usual setup whereby we run through what has happened over the weekend. We talk about what, uh, and look at the major events that could shape the trading week ahead of us. And then of course I go to the major markets, popular indices, popular currency, popular currency pairs, popular commodities. As any markets that I haven't covered, feel free to give me a shout. Just type in the chat box uh, and happily wrap, um, talk talk about, um, happily kind of comment on the markets that, that I, you want me to comment on towards the end of the, of the webinar. At the very end, I'll show you a few bits and pieces on our website about what to look out for in terms of news and information and, and analysis. Now that we've got in the risk warning bit out of the, web, out of the way, we can now actually focus on the what's been going on in the trading in the trading uh, trading on Monday. To be honest, not a whole lot. It's been a fairly quiet start to to, to the week. Um, we've seen essentially a bit of profit taking on some of the European equity markets. Um, the FTSE hit, hit a multi-month high last week. Um, this is the major sell-off in sterling on the back of the Bank of England with the FTSE very internationally focused FTSE 100. Uh, very re relatively cheaper to buy and I pushed the FTSE on to multi-month highs. Across the English Channel in the Eurozone, what we saw, we saw both, both the German market, the DAX and the CAC 40 in France hit record highs last week. Uh, we also saw um, de decent moves in the Italian market, uh, but we did see the usual political uncertainty out of Spain, which is obviously natural what's going on there. Over the weekend, the ex- uh, Catalonian leader, the president of Catalonia, uh, Charles Puigdemont, uh, handed himself in to Belgian authorities. I haven't seen any kind of additional updates on that. A number of uh, Catalan politicians who remained in, in, in Catalonia have been jailed, or have been, have been arrested at the, at the very least. Um, the, situ the situation is obviously, obviously ongoing in Catalonia, but while we haven't seen a whole lot of, oh, how, while we haven't seen any really negative news coming out of, out of Catalonia uh, in relation to the, the backlash or the reaction by the Madrid government. We haven't seen any huge sell-offs um, in the Spanish market in, in the IBEX 35. On Thursday and Friday, we saw a couple of, we saw some banks downgrading, uh, some, some Spanish banks being downgraded uh, on Thursday and Friday, which caused a bit of a sell-off, but nothing major. Uh, given especially in relation to what we've seen recently, uh, in, in on the Spanish IBEX, they were, they're relatively small moves, but some of the, but for the for considering the Spanish IBEX, which we which are recovering a couple of minutes, it has been giving up some of the gains it made in the last say, week or, or or ten days. Taking a look now to what we can expect uh, over the next few trading sessions, as always, I'll flick through the, the major highlights. Uh, if you're not familiar where you can where you can find this, I'm sure you all are because you tune in regularly to the webinar. But if you go to the CMC Markets pa CMC Markets website under news and analysis uh, click filter by third option down is the weekly outlook outlook this is posted on our website every single week gives a breakdown of what to look ahead for uh, in the coming trading week so coming up today we have quarterly figures from TripAdvisor looking ahead to tomorrow we have the Reserve Bank of Australia the RBA have, have their uh, have their it have their interest rate decision Rates are tipped to remain uh, on hold at 1.5%. On Wednesday, we have trade numbers coming out of China in the early hours of the Wednesday trading session. So if you are trading that, keep an eye. If you are trading mining companies, keep an eye on, um, on what's, what's going on out of China. 
China is a major importer of raw materials. Any signs that their economy is growing rapidly or, 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 or slowing down can have a big impact on the, on the metals market. Looking ahead to Thursday, we have numbers that are coming out from Burberry, which are also kind of Chinese related in that uh, the kind of growing middle class in China is very keen to import luxury goods from the West, and Burberry is on that list. Other companies, including Diageo, have done quite well over the last number of years of the of the more affluent uh, middle income earners in China. Uh, what we also have on Thursday is an update from Sainsbury's. Uh, the British supermarket uh, will have their numbers coming out on Thursday. And also on Thursday, Macy's, the kind of high end, uh, the Macy's, the retailer in the United States, is also worth keeping an eye out for. This, um, this particular uh, s s um, section of the website will give a break breakdown of the dividends uh, to, uh, uh, for the various different indices. In case you do see a dividend adjustment on your account, uh, it also gives a more deep, detailed version of what's coming out in terms of corporate, uh, corporate earnings. Um, which we didn't cover in the highlights. Associated British Foods, owner of Primark, uh, they, they, got, they, have, they have numbers coming out. As do Imperial Brands, tobacco company, as did Marriott Hotel. This is all on, on, this is all tomorrow on Tuesday, referring to Snap, have numbers coming out tomorrow as well. Looking ahead to Wednesday, the 8th of November, BlackRock Capital, Inve BlackRock Capital Investment, major fund manager in, in, in the US, they have numbers coming out, third quarter numbers. Uh, M&S, uh, uh, Marks & Spencer's, have half-year numbers coming out um, in the UK, bearing in mind their head of division, head of clothing division resigned not too long ago. That was a bit of a shock announcement. Basically, the, the usual run rundown for the last several years of M&S is the food division has performed quite well, but the other section, which includes things like clothes, particularly clothing, has always been relatively underperforming. And what we saw next had some not so hot numbers and a and, and, and a not too bullish outlook uh, not too long ago, only last week. Sell off and next also put, put pressure on other retailers and MS because of a reasonable size closing reasonable size closing department, they also uh, were hit on the back of that as well. Turning our attention to Thursday, as I mentioned, uh, Burberry have a num of numbers of half your numbers out, as do Auto Trader. And uh, AstraZeneca, the drug maker, have numbers coming out as well on Thursday. Scrolling down, half half your numbers coming out from, from Hartford's as well. And as I mentioned, in Lib uh, as I mentioned already, uh, Macy's uh, have, have numbers coming out as well on Thursday. So I'm turning our attention now to uh, the major markets. Uh, first off the bat, as always, will be the FTSE 100. So as we can see here, broadly speaking, over the last basically for, for 2017, we had a few decent corrections, but broadly speaking, the, 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 the FTSE has been pushing higher. And as you can see here, the, the move referring to the multi-month high rate on Friday there, uh, traded at a high of 7,580. Bit of a pullback in, in today's session, but we're not too far away from, from the multi-month high here. And also, let's be honest, the all-time high at 7,599. So we're currently trading... At 7,555, so we're less, so we're, we're we're talking about less than 60 points away from the record highs. So, so, so that this kind of this this positive move here we've seen since late October is still very much in 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 uh, in, in in place. That the positive trend we can see here. Look at, at the MACD indicator on the momentum portion of it. There's been a sharp uh, decline in negative momentum, which could potentially turn positive. And should that be the case, that would confirm the kind of upward move. Should we see it? So. The, the negative momentum is dissipating, so it could be a sign the the, the, the the momentum is going to be with the bulls. As we can see here, we pulled back ever so slightly uh, from Friday's um, multi-month high, but if you look at this this candle here, this was Thursday, at the, the rally after the Bank of England, the dovish hike from the Bank of England, and the and sent it starting lower. So the sentiment is still quite bullish. Um, on the on the UK 100, the FTSE 100. So if we do see a bit of a pullback, we could find support in around the 7,500 level, or even even if we, if we do push lower, we could see some buying come into play in this price area here, which comes into play in around 7,425. Notice how not only there's we have a couple of a couple of candles here which uh, had support in around that area. But it also got to coincides with both the 50-day moving average and also the 100-day moving average. And notice how the 50-day moving average acted nicely as support here. So we do have a re recent history of the 50-day moving average acting as support. So should we, should we see move down here 
we can also see that wouldn't be necessarily a sign that this positive trend is coming to an end. We could, we could see some buyers enter the fold. Uh, but by and large, the, 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 the positive outlook is still very much in place. So heading towards 7,580 would be the next level to watch out for to the upside should the positive move resume. And then north of that, uh, the all-time high, just shy of 7,600. Um, not too, too, too dissimilar with the, uh, with the German E30, the DAX. So as you can see here, uh, had a quite an impressive week last week. Snap had a gap tire. Uh, this could potentially be uh, what's called a runaway gap, which are often found in the middle of a trend. The trend has been very, very clearly positive as we're cr creating uh, fresh all-time highs all of last week. So ever so slightly kind of pull back. Uh, but the but the but the but the uh, the outlook uh, the positive outlook still remains in place for the for the Germany 30 for the DAX. So if we do see any pullbacks, we may find support in around this price area here of uh, 13,400, or we could even see potentially possibly the market turn over on itself a small bit, go down here, fill this gap here, which should be comes into play in around. 13,316 down to 13,256 before we potentially resume the wider upward trend. Now, one of the, one of the myths about, about gaps is that they always get filled. They don't always get filled, they often get filled. Um, and when a market gap's higher, that the gap then, if, it, if a market gap's higher, it's a pull aside, if the market gap's lower, it's a, it's a bearer sign. And that gap then will act, effectively act as, in this case, support because it's a, it's a, it, was a, it was a gap higher. So that, that this area here could act as support. So if we do see drifts lower here, we may see some buying come into place at these two levels, which I just mentioned here. But the wider trend, a positive trend, is still in place. So it's, it's one possibility. We could see a bit of profit taken. The market moves lower, fills that gap, and before it goes out to res resume the wider upward trend. Notice how as the market was kind of failing to kind of make a, de a, de a de decent additional gains per day, the gains it made per day were kind of minuscule. We did see a slight kind of cooling of the rate of change in positive momentum, but it's still, it's still uh, very much on the positive side. So I suspect we are going to see a continuation of the positive move in the DAX. It's not too dissimilar on the France 40 on the CAC. As we can see here, market pushed higher, hit a record high only last Wednesday. And we've been trading in a very tight range ever since then. It's ever so slightly worrying that we're seeing uh, a decline a, on positive momentum on the MACD indicator here. The, the slight pullback in price is confirmed by the slight decline in positive momentum. Who knows? That may even swing to the negative side like we saw here. But if we do see moves lower, things were coming off an all-time high. That could potentially just mean we may see a bit of profit taking, but we also could potentially find some, some buyers or some support in around this price here. The previous all-time high, 7,475, or down to this, the recent low here from the from late October at 7,463. So that, that kind of 12 or, or sorry, 15 point range may be an area whereby if we do see a pullback, that could be an, potentially an area whereby buy, fresh buyers may enter the fold. But nonetheless, we're just off all-time highs, so, so the so price is the most important thing to look out for. So the bullish uh, sentiment is still very much in place. Looking to the upside, if you're looking up towards 5,600 will be the next big level to watch out for to the upside. It's only if you move, say, well below this area here, the, kind of the October low of 7,537, then you may want to consider kind of that could be a sign that we could see an, this is a substantial uh turned around in the price of the of the France 40. Taking a look now at the Spanish 35, the IBEX, you'll see that what I meant whereby the market uh, gave up some of the gains that it had that it made uh, last week. So throughout the summer months it was in a clear downward channel and it was this was, it was well in place a long time before the situation in Catalonia really kicked off. Bearing in mind it was the it was it, it was the the first of, 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 uh, of October, which fell on a Sunday, is, is when the, Catal it was the Catalan re referendum was held. So it was in a, down a clear downward trend well before then. When the situation started to kind of cool a bit and things didn't look as if it was going to end in, in quite a... We didn't have any repeat signs of... Uh, we didn't have any, whenever 
the Madrid government imposed direct rule and um, Mr. Pudemont uh, fled the country, around then is when we saw the market snap higher. It pushed higher uh, and it kind of broke out of the downward trend that it's been in. But ever since then, since uh, since last Wednesday, it has been giving up, uh, has been giving up the ground. And notice how the market traded as low as where that, where the uh, where this um, resistance line well, is now acting as support. Old resistance is now acting as support. We're pretty much trading down as far as here, which also coincides with the 50-day moving average at 10,227. So. I've, I suspect this could be an important price price region to keep an eye out for. This could be an area whereby the, whereby the profit taking that has come into place here may just be looking to give up some of the gains before it pushes on higher again and goes to create new multi-month highs. But it could also be a point if you make a size of a break below it, we could see his head back down towards this price area in, in early October at 10,100 and then south of that the October low at 10,866. I think this is sort of kind of a, a, a bit of a knife edge scenario. If we do see a bounce off from this area here at, at the, one, the 50 day moving average, which also coincides with the, uh, the old resistance, the old, the old trend line resistance now acting potentially I think, as trend line support, we could be looking back up towards 10,600, the recent high. And then north of that, the August high, keep an eye out for at 10,758. And then looking towards a couple of, a couple of highs in June. 10,912 and then the, the June high itself at uh, 10,900 sorry 11,047 so I think we're in a bit of a kind of a, a do or potential turning point or a pivot point here for the IBEX 35. Notice how as the market was pushing higher it was confirmed by the MACD indicator the momentum component that was increasing and now we're, now we're seeing a, a, a kind of clear decline in positive momentum so the momentum is the it's still, with the, it's still with, the, with, the, with the buyers, but it's kind of running out of steam. Whether that, that runs out of steam, this leads to fresh buyers coming into place at a lower price, or whether we actually turn negative and actually break down through these levels here. That has yet to be seen. Uh, the, the, let's turn our attention now to the American markets, which are in quite an, an impressive, uh, quite an impressive bull run, and we're seeing no real signs of that being uh, of that coming to an end. This is the, the, the Dow, the, the Dow Jones we're looking at here. Classic example of, an, of, a, of a market trending higher, whereby the market just goes on to create higher highs and pull. And we have the odd pullback, and we see some buyers enter in, and the market continues to be higher. So buying on the dip has been a very popular strategy for, for traders on the, on the Dow Jones over the last number of months. If we do see any pullbacks, we may find support in this price area here at uh, 23,249, or south of that, in around the kind of 23,000 figure itself. And then below that, maybe that down towards 22,735, where the 50 day moving average comes into play in around 22,634. These are all areas you could potentially find support should the market have a reasonable size pullback. But it's, it's, it's the, kind of, it's the, it's the uh, how much risk do you want to take on? If you, do you want to wait for a pullback and potentially get into the market at a, at a better price? But then again, the market may not pull back, it may just keep pushing on. And there's been several occasions where the market has just pushed higher without really taking a breather. I will say this, though, that as the market is going on to create all-time highs, it is a bit concerning that, to looking at the MACD indicator on the, on the momentum side, we can see on the histogram here that it's, in, it's ever so slightly in negative territory. I mean, you've got a market going higher. But, yet, but, the, but the negative momentum is actually rising. That's called divergence. It's going in the opposite directions. Ideally, you want, you want the two to confirm each other. While the market's going higher, positive momentum is increasing. And when the market's going lower, you'd you, you like to see negative momentum increasing. Price is the most important thing you should be looking out for. If the market's hitting all-time highs. That's what you really got to focus on. But if you're already long, just be careful because this could be an early sign that we were, we were in we we're, uh, were in line for a correction and if you watch your financial TVs you'll see here all the time talk about talking about when this when, when is this, this, this bull run going to come to an end and this this is the sort of thing that could be a kind of an early warning sign that a market is coming to that a market correction is coming around and if you do manage to kind of keep pushing higher because we're in kind of uncharted territory as it were 
traders are going to be keeping uh, for, for big psychological numbers like 20, 23,600, 700, 800, so on and so forth. The S&P 500 looks fairly similar. Not uh, a kind of a, an unstoppable, what appears to be an unstoppable string of record highs. And even more, more obvious, kind of a class example of a, of a higher high and then higher lows all the way along. And for the last five or six weeks, there hasn't been really much of an opportunity to, to actually kind of get a board uh, wait, wait, get a board and uh, to waiting for a dip, but we have seen a few opportunities. So, looking at the price action here, the, the, the price is clearly to the up. The market's going higher, so so the um, the sentiment is, is clearly to the upside. Similar, the next kind of big level to watch out for is going to be 2,600, and then you know beyond that, 2,650 and 727 and so on and so forth. But if you do see any kind of pullbacks, we may find some support in around here. In at 2,560, or south of that, 2,544, or down towards 2,531. These are areas you potentially see some support. Should we see the market actually pull back? But bearing in mind, it's a bit like, if you're waiting for a pullback in October, you may there may have been only a couple of opportunities to actually get a, get aboard uh, get aboard the market itself. A well, similar situation, and even more so on this chart. As the market is going on, creating fresh all-time highs here, this is what I'm talking about when you when you, when you like, well, I keep an eye on the MACD indicator. The S&P 500 gapped higher here, pull a sign. We're going to create a record high, pull a sign. As you can see here, that was confirmed by the steady increase in positive momentum on the histogram here. It's increasing, increasing. What do we see here? We see the market pull, um, pull back ever so slightly. And then on, on the MACD histogram, we see a decline in the rate of positive momentum so that was a sign that the bulls are running out of steam that could be the early sign that if you are looking to get on, get on the market potentially look to search uh keep an eye out for potential entry points because it could could be a sign that the uh, that the, the, the bulls are running out of steam has a bit of has a bit of a breather and that kind of re resumes its positive upward trend what do we see here confirmed by positive momentum but from around here onwards it is a bit concerning that the price from this point onwards, from say Monday the 9th of October a few weeks ago, continues in a kind of upward, classic upward trend, but the positive momentum slides and slides and slides, it actually even swings in negative and it re remained consistently in negative. So there's been a clear divergence the last few weeks. So this is what I mean about how the price is more important than the MACD indicator, because if you were going up the MACD alone, you'd, you'd be losing money or you'd be stopped off by now. If you're keeping an eye on the price, you can see the market's moving, moving higher, but also notice how the rate at which it's ratcheting up new records it isn't really that high we're not, we're not seeing major ground being made, made here but we're seeing ground being made nonetheless so it could be a sign that that, we're, that we may we may see a pullback in the uh, in the in the uh, s p 500 turning your attention now to the uh, the gold market gold has had a bit of a quiet a fairly quietish one the last few weeks. It's been trading in a relatively, you know, relatively tight range. Uh, the gold market has. It's been largely dancing around the 100-day moving average, which comes to play at 1276. I haven't gone, you know, maybe I haven't really gone ten dollars above or below it in, a, in a while now. But over the last few, so the, the big picture in gold is broadly speaking, it's still the market's pushing higher. But if you look at it here, it created a 13-month high here in September, and then the market sold off heavily, had the bounce back, sold off again, and now it's like now it's like the market's kind of figuring out which way it's just in sideways consolidation uh, mode here. And it's as I mentioned, as I said, it's very very closely anchored to the 100-day moving average in around 1275, 1276. So I think gold could be one of those kind of key moments whereby. It, it, you'd like to see a move in a certain direction before you can get a clear take and where it may potentially go from there. So looking at the downside, because the trend over the last say, five or six weeks has been to the downside, if you do break south of the, well, well in around 1260, 1261, where the 200, the 200 day moving average comes into play, if you go south of 1260, 1261, we could be looking back towards mid-July level of around 1230, and then south of that at the, the, the July low of 1204. To the upside, if you do get a decent break to the upside, we'd like to see it take off first of all the October high of 13.06, and then you can become more confident that the kind of wider upper trend is still intact. And then north of um, 13.06, levels to keep potentially 
uh, which could potentially act as, as resistance would be 1316, north of that again 1334, and then the September high of 1358, which also coincides, which is also a 13 month high. Silver is not too, uh, is looking, the chart in silver is looking reasonably similar. As you can see here, different story that silver was kind of losing ground for uh, just in the early early part of the year, and now it, it seems to be a similar situation. We're by one or day moving average in, in around this price area here of 16 spot 87 seems to be seems to be acting as kind of a magnet for the price of silver. So it's kind of the market's trading in a tight range. Is it going to break to the north? Is it going to break to the south? The MACD indicator and the whole Instagram isn't really telling us a whole lot. It's sort of kind of flickering between positive and negative momentum, and there's no real kind of clear direction on either. There's no strong momentum in either side. So if you do move to do move to the downside in silver, if you take off this level here, the late October low at 16 spot 60, that could be kind of setting us on a track down to the October low itself of 16 spot 33, and then south of that, we, we potentially the support would be in a this 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 press price here at 16 spot 13 and then south of that we'll be looking towards july low the uh the low the low for 2017 at 15 spot 06 but conversely we, we're seeing a lot of convergence between the 50 day moving average and the 1 or 2 moving average both come into play around the same level at 7 17 spot 18 now should we take off that that price there that could be a sign that momentum is swinging to the up, upside and then the first level to watch out for beyond that would be the October high of 17 spot 46, and then north of that, um, kind of a level that acted as support, uh, and, and also a bit of resistance in September was was 17 spot 62, and then should we take our 17 62, uh, 17 spot 62, and keep an eye out for the September high of 18 spot 21. The energy market uh, continues to press higher and, and higher. Uh, looking at at, at, uh, at uh, politics in Saudi Arabia, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia is looking to is looking to kind of crack down on, on certain members uh, the, 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 of the of the royal family and the Saudi Ra Saudi Arabian regime government uh, that he kind of deems that it, in his in his eyes would be um, would be kind of in, involved in potentially. Actions that are kind of looking to damage the reputation of the state. Uh, on the back of that, uh, the the crown prince, who's is previously expressed his his his, um, his, fit, his, um, his support for the OPEC uh, oil cuts, production cuts. He is the, the traders now suspect that um, Saudi Arabia could be looking to potentially extend uh, the oil cuts beyond the end of March 2018. This is this has been speculated on again off again for quite some time. But the sentiment in the market is 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 they're they're, they're concerned about the uh, about the oil the OPEX coordinated production cut remaining in place and if the herd are pushing north and the market is heading hit a new a level not seen in over two years that's an area to keep an eye on for look at it it's even now traded as high as its 200 week moving average not a level we haven't seen the price of Brent. At this level since uh, June, well, er, uh, mid, late June 2015. So we're talking about a 28 month a fresh. We're still hitting 28 month highs, but we're talking about a fresh 28 month high for the price of WTI. This is going to be a big level to watch out for here. Uh, if we can get a close above this, this would be quite significant on the Tuesday moving average, which comes into play um, on the price of, of, of Brent at. 62 spot 88 so we're not too we're pretty much at it now so can we can we go north of that and if we can go north of that levels to potentially watch out for to the upside will be in around here 66.33 and then north of that again would would, would, would take, us, take us back to the may 2015 high of 69 spot 23. uh looking to the downside uh here we see, uh, look, look, flip to a daily chart to keep an eye on or levels so you can potentially see some support $62 a barrel could act as support uh, to the downside, and then $60 a barrel itself, and then down to the September high of $59.51. These are areas you can potentially see support, bearing in mind the upward trend that, that's, uh, that Brent has been in for, uh, for a few months now is very much in place. If we're hitting fresh multi month highs, 28 month highs, that's really what, what that's kind of a, that tells you all you need to know which way the sentiment is pointing to. 
as we can see here, as the price is pushing higher, the uh, the MACD indicator on the on the histogram was, was was gaining ground. So the higher moves be confirmed by the uh, positive the rise in positive momentum. Looking now at WTI, it's going to be a similar chart, not a, not as uh, aggressive uh, as WT as, as Brent, but still uh, along those lines. As you can see here, the market has pushed higher. Similar D hasn't quite got, gotten to his 200 week moving average, so that's going to be the next level, big level to watch out for for, for WTI. $58.58. And 50, 58 cents, 58.58 uh, on WTI. If Brent has, has gotten there, there's been a bit of a lag between the two recently, but if Brent has gotten there, it's a possibility we could also see WTI getting there as well. Notice how as the market was pushing higher. The MACD histogram positive momentum was steadily increasing, so the positive movement on the price has been confirmed for the positive move in momentum as well. Uh, as you can see here, there's been some sizable pullbacks in the price of WTI over the last few months. So if we do see a pullback, we may find support in run 50 bu 55 bucks a barrel or south of that, just just below the 54 dollar a, bar a barrel level, or even down towards 52 dollars and 53 cents. I'll run through a few currency pairs now, uh, the main currency pairs, and then I'll just briefly show you a few items on the website uh, where we have news analysis located. Uh, does any markets starting Kiwi? Yep. Sure, no problem, Michael. I'll, I'll get on to that. Does any markets uh, that you want me to cover that I haven't covered yet? Uh, feel free to stick them in the chart in the chart in the chat box, and I'll get around to doing them. Uh, for those of you that, that tuned in last week, we talked about a head and shoulders formation on the euro versus the US dollar. And I'll show you a quick textbook example of what a head, head and shoulders formation looks like. So I've taken this uh, from investopedia.com. Head and shoulders reverse the pattern, as the name suggests, it's a, re it's a reverse, um, reverses the, the previous move. Reverses the previous positive move, and this is essentially what what the, what the chart looks like. The market rallies to a fresh high, creates the the left shoulder, pulls back to the, the reaction lows. Market pushes higher again, takes out the height, takes out the previous high, so that this becomes the head. The head is north of the uh, of the left shoulder, pulls back to to reaction lows. Notice how the reaction lows here. Is kind of almost on par or very similar to the reaction lows from the retreat from the left shoulder. Rallies again to form the the right shoulder, but doesn't take out the uh, the high that was created for the head. And it's often there thereabouts is the same size, it's the same height as the left shoulder. On some occasions it's a bit it's a bit lower because it's almost like the market it was kind of running out of steam on this leg. Then it pushes lower. But what does it do? This when you draw, when you connect these two lines, the third, when you connect these two reaction lows and draw a line, that's called the neckline. And what does it do? It falls below the neckline. It has one last rally up towards the neckline before it pushes lower again. And how you determine the kind of price target? You take the high the high point from the head in the vertical line down to the neckline, and you project that down the way. That's the way how, how you get your price target. Now. Feel free to go online and read more read more about head and shoulders uh, formation. But it, it would appear we have a head and shoulders formation on the euro versus the US dollar here on the daily chart. We can see here the euro dollar created a fresh multi-month high here. This is the left shoulder. It pulls back here in at 16.70. Pushes on higher here to create the, the form the head, um, which is in around 120.92. Pulls back here all the way back down towards... 1670 again coinciding with the kind of reaction lows from after after hitting creating the left shoulder pushes higher here the high here doesn't take out the the the, the high of the head and it doesn't even take out the high of the left shoulder so the right shoulder was not uncommon uh, to be not as high as the left shoulder pushes here trades lower again trades south breaks below what we call the neckline this price area here when you create it and you draw a line between the two reaction lows Create goes south of that at 1670, and what does it do? It goes on here, actually trades ever so ever so briefly north of the of the neckline on a couple of occasions, and now we're back south of that as well. So this could be the beginning of a of a, of a few hundred points or a few hundred pips pullback in the euro versus the US dollar. And given that this is a 12 120 92, and the and the neckline comes into play at 1670, that's on over 400 pip. 
uh, price gap between the two. So, so if we take 400 pips off of 1670 and go south the way, we're heading back back down towards the kind of 112, 112 area uh, in terms of price targets looking to the downside or 11170 ballpark will be kind of a, a, a potential price target for the euro versus the US dollar should this actually be a head in formations uh, reversal pattern but as we're moving south keep an eye out for the 30 moving average that's going to be potentially a big price area to keep an eye out for and that comes into play in at 112.72 palladium sure I'll do palladium as well now take a look at the British pound versus the US dollar cable First thing we notice is that since the lows of of March this year, it's been broadly been pushing higher, and it's still it's now trading of one, north of 131. So it's still broadly speaking uh, in its in its upward trend. But notice how we're seeing a, a lot of consolidation in around this 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 um this this mark here. Draw the trend line from the lows of March, connect the lows of August, and just continue down here. We can see it's traded below a couple of occasions, sort of a, okay, a bit of a consolidation zone. Are we going to break south of it or are we just going to bounce off it and, and push higher? Given that the market's are trading at 131 north of the 130 level and we're pretty much trading almost at or on, or on top of the 100 day moving average in round here because at the 131 area, I would suggest we could potentially, the, the, the bullish outlook is still in place for the, for the British pound versus the US dollar. Notice how the 100 day moving average acted as support here. Didn't quite nearly act as support there uh, as a bit of a bit of history acting as support in both in August and also September. So all coming together um, between the, the trend line support from the, from the March lows and the volatility moving average. I think this area is going to be a potentially big area of support. And should we bounce off of this, levels to watch out for to the upside will be the August high of 133.35 35, and then north of that up towards 134.52 and then beyond that see September high at 136.59 but if you do break below this trend line and if you do go south of 130 uh, we could be we, that could be a, a, a sign that we're heading back down towards the two day moving average uh, at 128.59 euro sterling <coughs> that's what I'll quickly do now yeah, I'm coming on to euro, euro dollar, sorry, dollar yen in in uh, two tar two charts time, and I will have a look at the dollar versus the Swissy. So we've seen a after a sizable move to the upside on euro sterling, we've come off quite aggressively, and in my view, the euro sterling is sort of trapped between a few of the a few of the moving averages. To the downside, the thirty moving average has acted as very decent support. All right, well there thereabouts is acted as decent support. Uh, and to the upside, well, kind of the 100-day the 100 moving average and the 50-day moving average are kind of, kind of converging on top of each other, are, kind of, are turning over on, on each other. So I think this is going to be one of those moments whereby uh, you, you, you can almost um, wait until we see a move in either direction, whether we go south, we go back south on the 20-day moving average and take out the, uh, the November low at uh, zero spot 8733 and that could be a sign that we're heading back down towards 86 back towards 85 here a lot of consolidation um, in the earlier part of the year at these price areas it is zero spot 85 zero spot 86 zero spot 84 or whether we actually push higher take out above the 50 and the one day moving average and manage to kind of move back up to, to um, the kind of October highs and they also one of the pullbacks from September, which comes into play at 90, 0, 9, 0, 9, 0, spot 9049. You want to be kind of taking out the 50 day moving average to be kind of more sure, to be more confident uh, that, this, uh, that, that this positive move is going to last. Notice how it acted resistance on a couple of occasions in September. So you want to see it go north of the 50 day moving average, which is in around um, 89.45, and then beyond that again, not. Of the, of the October high at 89, sorry, zero spot 9033. And if you do manage to go to go north of that, we could then potentially see a move back up towards zero, 92, zero spot 9226. I'll come on to the dollar versus Japanese yen right now. And then look at the dollar Swissy. Uh, sorry, the, the dollar franc, yeah, the dollar Swiss franc, um, sterling versus the Kiwi and palladium. So we can see here that the dollar versus the Japanese yen has been in a solid upward trend 
since early September. It managed to go on and even create a multi-month high today. So that kind of tells you which way, which of the uh, which way this the sentiment is going. But we have seen a bit of a pullback. So we could find support on the dollar yen in around the kind of 114, 113 areas. But the upward trend is is is, uh, is still in, is still in place. Next level to watch out for to the upside uh, could be could be 115.62. This is an area which was from the kind of middle of uh, middle of January middle of January 2017 acted as resistance. So 115.62, and then north of that the the, the big number 116 would be less level to potentially keep an eye on for. So, and then on the downside, as I mentioned, we may get some support in around. In around the uh, this this price area here of 114 initially, and then south of that 113 spot 57, and then 113 at the figure itself. Right, I'll just go through. Okay, we've already got about a few minutes over time. Yep, no worries, you're very welcome. We've already got a few minutes over time, so I'll do sterling, new kiwi kiwi dollar. I'll do euro. Sorry, I'll do US dollar versus the Swiss franc, and then I'll, I'll do palladium. And that will have to be it in terms of the charts that we'll be looking at this week. So looking at to find the market. Just uh, doing the board a bit now, scrolling through. Looking at the cash contract. For Palladium, oh, that's apologies. That's a wrong contract. That's wrong market. That is platinum. Well, that is this, is this is obviously the really big picture in the monthly chart. We're going on to here to hit multi-year highs for uh, for Palladium. And also, it's in a very quite fairly steepish um, upper trend. Um, keep notice how as the market was pushing higher and higher and higher, we saw a considerable increase in the uh, on the MACD histogram of positive momentum. So the momentum is certainly with the buyers. Similar view here on on the on the weekly chart. The market continues to keep on pushing and pushing. I'll uh, take a look now at the daily chart. Any potential kind of level? Any signs? I would I would suggest that the um, the market is going to continue. It's in a very clear and obvious upward trend for palladium. I suspect this 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 um this upward trend is going to continue. Levels to keep an eye out for. If we do see pullbacks, where we may potentially get some support. We can see there's a few occasions where. But just south of the 50-day moving average and in, recent, in recent weeks has acted as support. So these are areas we could potentially see uh, support coming into play. If the, if the Palladium market does pull back, if it pulls back to around the kind of 951 or 950 or maybe 945 area, we could potentially find support from uh, from uh, from that particular metric. Bearing in mind, uh, it's always a good idea to, to be not too tight with your stop losses because we saw here in, in July... It kind of almost kind of bounced off of the 50-day moving average, but on these occasions here, if your stop losses would have been too tight, you would have gotten stopped out and missed the onward move. So that's why I said, even though the 50-day moving average is at 951 dollars, you know you, you, you may want a few dollars out of side of that just to be uh, just to be careful because you could potentially see a uh, market just bounce off the 50 or a dollar or, or three, two below it and then uh, rocket higher yet again. So. As you can see, market's going on to hit multi, uh, well, there, there about near multi-year highs, and positive momentum is on the up, so you can be more confident that the bullish move will last. Uh, USDC. Just look now at the currencies. US dollar Swiss.
so we can see here that the uh, US dollar versus the, uh, the Swiss franc is, uh, has been in a fairly solid upward trend since uh, since kind of you know middle of September, so for about for about two months now. It wasn't that long ago that we were, we were hitting multi-month highs. So the, tre the the bullish trend is still very much in place. We're, we're comfortably above the 200-day moving average. What I would keep an eye out for is that as the market here hit a hit a multi-month high, it was trading at a fairly narrow range in around here. Uh, you can see that. On the, on the MACD histogram, positive momentum is sliding somewhat. So it could be a sign the market's kind of running out of steam a bit. But running out of steam after a two-month bull run isn't really anything to be overly concerned about. If anything, it could be an indication we have a bit of, of a pullback. And who knows, it may even provide an opportunity to actually buy into the market. So if we do dip lower in the uh, in the US dollar versus the Swiss franc, we could find some buying support in around here. This price here in at zero spot 99.50 or south of that at zero spot 99.00 or maybe even down as down as low as a 30 moving average at zero spot 98.13. Notice how it acted as resistance and then it finally actually broke north of it and then actually is, is not potentially acting as support. And the last market that I'll cover today is going to be the British pound versus the New Zealand dollar. Bearing in mind, uh, during the week we have an update from the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. Uh, interest rates are, are tipped to remain unchanged at 1.75%. But if you are keeping, if you are trading this currency pair, or it's going to trade anything that has the um, any uh, New Zealand dollar pairs, obviously be, be mindful of uh, interest rate decisions. GBP, New Zealand dollar. You're welcome, Andrew. No worries. So the, so the, the starting Kiwi has obviously had a major, major sell-off over the last number of years. But as we can see here on the weekly chart that it's managed to push north of the 100-week moving average. And after finally smashing that, after breaking north of it, what they'll do is now acting as support. So keep an eye out for the 100 week moving average, which comes into play at 1 spot 88.50. It acted as resistance here, and now it's potentially going to act as support on this side of things. We can see here that the market has been kind of making a steady kind of uh, a, a steady push higher. So I would suggest the outlook for this in the, over the next few weeks or months is going to be bullish. We can see here that the market has come up a, a, a small bit. Keep an eye out. Uh, an eye out for the for the 100 week moving average, but also other areas you could potentially find support. Uh, the kind of is, is a bit toppy looking around the market, around to a bit of resistance in around the kind of one spot 87 area, and then even potentially uh, in areas you could also potentially find some support, maybe a bit lower than that, might be even down towards the kind of one spot 83.30 area uh, for the for potential areas of support. And then obviously to the upside, we're probably you no, know, we were not too far away from 194. So if you're looking towards 197, and then a longer term view will be up to actually the figure of two spot zero zero itself. Notice how as the market turned over on itself here, better decline, we saw a swing from positive momentum to negative momentum at the MACD indicator. So this could play out a bit longer. So we could see a um, we, we could see a, a bit of a deeper correction. So that, that's, that's why I suggested keeping an eye out down as far as potentially 183.33 itself. Uh, that, uh, that concludes the, kind of the, the charting part of the seminar. As we always ru run through, uh, please keep an eye out for all the things that we do uh, in here at, at CMC Markets. What I do, what is updated uh, several times throughout the day, is the chart form, which I have opened on the, on the screen here. Click on the chart forum here, give you a breakdown of the analysis that we, that we myself and all other analysts do. Very short, uh, quick chart and a few other characters about what's going on in that particular chart. The chart, for, the chart forum can be found under Market Pulse. Hit the third option down. Under Market Pulse, click on the sec th second option down is the insights. Gives you a breakdown of economic data coming out during the day. Some of the news and analysis that we do gets posted onto the, directly onto Insight. Some of it gets posted onto our website. Uh, we also, have, uh, if we have events on, we, we, we will uh, advertise those events and make you aware of the, of the events on the Insight. Under Market Calendar, fourth option down, it'll give you a breakdown of the actual, the forecast, and the previous. And what you can do is you can actually uh, click on a tab here, 
So that should remind you automatically of, as you can see here, I've clicked on the UK house, house prices, which are coming up tomorrow at half nine. And you can set, set a reminder so it automatically just, just populates on your screen, on your trading platform, when the, the figures actually come out. Uh, taking it now back at our platform, looking back at our platform, under the news analysis section, I've, the couple of articles that I've written today so far, first one goes up in the morning, around 6 in the morning, and then the mid-morning update gets, gets, gets updated around 10 o'clock, both of those, were, and also the, the update, the next and last update of the evening should be done around 4 o'clock at London time, that will be found here under the uh, news and analysis section. And also feel free to uh, just to sign up for, for future seminars and webinars. On Wednesday, um, looking ahead beyond today, um, the next one to watch out for tonight um, at 7 p.m. for the summer, sorry, GMT, we're, we're, we're now in, in GMT, um, 7 p.m. London time. We have a webinar, uh, it is the Trader Development Program Part 1, founda uh, uh, Foundations of, Te of Technicals. On Wednesday, the 8th of November at uh, 19.30, Greenwich Mean Time, uh, 7.30 p.m. London time, we have, a, we have a webinar on targeting potential opportunities in the equity market. And then back to next Monday, the 13th of November, I'll be back in the hot seat here at 12.15 for next Monday's webinar. I do appreciate yeah, your, your time and consideration. Uh, thank you from all of us here at CMC Markets. And have a good week and have, have uh, good luck. You're all very welcome. Thank you.